Ellie Dix here from The Dark Imp, helping parents to reclaim family time through playing board games together. I'm always very interested in the starting player conditions in board games. Traditionally, the first player or the starting player would be the youngest player in many sort of family games and maybe more mainstream games. But this is changing up a bit. And there's nothing more annoying than the youngest person in the household always getting to start every game. So I'm really embracing this, uh, this, this changing up a bit. Some games are now giving the advantage to the oldest player. Cash and Guns, for example, allows the eldest player to be the godfather and they get the godfather's desk, which is an advantage. Citadels gives the oldest player the crown, making them the king for the first round. Again, an advantage. Um, but other games are giving other people advantage. So, for example, Selenia says that the starting player is the one who has their head in the clouds, or the, that has that mostly has their head in the clouds. Small World gives the starting player to the player with the pointiest ears. Azul will give the starting player to the person who's visited Portugal most recently. Now, this has been a, li a little bit of a running joke in our family because until quite in, until earlier this year, I was the only person that had been to Portugal, uh, and so I was always a official first player in Azul. But we went on a family holiday to Lisbon earlier this year, and there was f my, my younger son actually orchestrated the whole thing, so he was last to get onto the plane and therefore last to visit Portugal. Um, hats off to him, really. He, he deserves to be starting player for that sort of dedication. Dice City uh, gives the starting player condition to the person who has most recently rolled a dice in a game. I don't know how you're supposed to remember. Spirits of the Forest says if you are the most recent person to hike through a forest, you get to be starting player. And For Sale says the person who lives in the biggest house. And that's not very useful for families. Uh, just saying. Anyway, we don't have, we don't pay any attention in our house to these starting player conditions. Not really, maybe it's all now. Um, but I think it's fairer to do everything randomly. And a lot of games say randomly choose your starting player. So, you know, there, is, there are different ways to make random choices. You might, for example, each roll a dice and the highest roll gets to start. That's a fairly normal random way of, of deciding. Maybe you could do the lowest number or the closest to four. Mix it up a little bit, so you could roll dice. Um, you, many games you have a sort of player pawn or a meeple that represents your your piece on the board, different colours. Um, a, a fairly common way of working out who goes first is to put the meeples in your hands and then let oh, let one fall. Let's try that again. Let one drop. Ah, orange is the starting player. Or you could put the you could divide the meeples up between your two hands, ask a player to choose left or right, and then again divide them, ask a player to choose left or right. That person starts. Um, I suppose if you've got a game where you've got lots of counters or currency coins, you could ask players to to bid a certain amount secretly put it in their hand and the lowest unique bid wins so if you bid one but someone else has bid one then you don't get to start it'll be the next highest you could bid zero you just have to have a few rules around that okay if you're playing cards uh, you could deal a pile to each person and the first to reveal a seven gets to be the starting player it's me. Or you could, uh, with a pack of cards, maybe you could get th a couple of nines out and a four or a jack. So you've got some cards that are the same. So if you're playing with three people, you could have these three cards. Uh, mix them up. Play find the lady. Mix them up, put them on the table, ask each player to choose a card. The one with the jack, that's me, wins. Well, starts the game. 
Um, or you could make a game of the uh, of the starting player condition. So if you've got some dice, you could, you know, be the first person to make a tower of seven dice. They'll win. They'll win the starting player, player privilege. Um, or you could play a game of tiddlywinks. See who's the first one to get it in the pot in the centre in, in the centre with your tiddlywinks. And maybe these things aren't random. They kind of favour people who have a higher level of dexterity or who've been wasting a lot of time practicing tiddlywinks. Or maybe you could create your own slide you know, out of um, toilet roll inners or um, kitchen roll tubes and, and, and one at a time put your little meeples in the top and the one that goes furthest, their starting player. Now mix it up a bit, consider your own random starting conditions and don't let the youngest player go first.